3,000 days in Hardcore Minecraft. What a massive milestone. And in this video, I'm going to create the most powerful mob farm that exists in Minecraft. They slice portals, light suppressors, update suppressors, an automatic bedrock breaking machine, and bats. <laughs> lots and lots of bats. And all of this together will create the end of light mob farm, getting me hundreds of thousands of drops extremely, extremely fast. At some point guys, I promise I will fix my house. But I thought it would be cool to get 30 notch apples for 3,000 days. Then I'd have one for every 100 days. So I'm going to get a timer on screen and see just how quickly I can find three of them. This is the place my portal has come out at. And there is a mine shaft right here. And look at that minecart chest. A notch apple in one of these is rare. But hey, it's not impossible. Although it's, it's pretty improbable. Maybe this ruined portal will be better. Or maybe it won't. And you know what's going to be even better? A desert pyramid. One in ten of these will have a notch apple. And this one did not. And what about this one? Well, it also did not. Same for the third one. Look at that. There's trees in a desert because of a lush cave below. I've never seen that before. Nothing in the fourth one. The fifth. The sixth. The seventh. The eighth. Ninth. Tenth. Eleventh. Are you kidding me? I've searched 12 of these and still not got one. Today is not my day. Surely in the thirteenth one... We've got to have something, but we haven't. This is my 15th one, and also my 15th failure. And there we go, Desert Temple number 19. It, that took forever. And there's still two more to go. I'm still searching all ruined portals in the area, and I'll also search the rest of this desert for any more pyramids. Although the way it's been going... Okay, well, <laughs> I was about to say, the way it's been going to me, I don't expect to find another one anytime soon. The very next pyramid. Better also check this chest just in case. No, there was nothing. But all of a sudden, things are right back on track. Can I make it three in a row? No. <laughs> no, I can't. I think I've pretty much searched all of this desert. Now I'm going to do shift and F3, lower the render distance down to two, and use this method to find dungeons. Here's dungeon number one. Here we are in the second one. Yet another one with no not chapel. And this is the fifth dungeon with no success still. And nothing in the sixth, the seventh. 7th, the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, and this is 15 dungeon search, and we got it, we have now got 30 notch apples. Let's safely add all of those to the end of chest, that is technically one for every 100 days. I'm very glad that this project is now over, let's go home. And the fastest way to do that is some nether travel, there's a bastion here, you never know, there could be some good loot at the bottom. I think they're gonna get a bit upset from me stealing all their gold, but okay, we got some netherite scrap, that's not bad. And that is basically all that we successfully got, oh my goodness, okay, now I've gotta be a little bit careful, there's a, there's a guy going after me, I think we just get out of here. But they are always worth searching in case you do find a notch apple. Here we are, home sweet home, let's drop off all of these items. Also guys, since it's 3,000 days, there is another poster. Yes, the goat of Minecraft has been moved along slightly to make way for this beauty. I've personally signed every single one of them, which took a very, very long time, and they are limited edition, which means there is only a limited number of them. Once they're sold out, they are gone forever. They'll probably run out in less than a week, so get them whilst you can. The link is in the description, sb737.store. And the next project that I need to do is finish this perimeter, since doing that will be key in building an end of light farm. They've all been set off, and so far they are all working correctly. So all I need to do is keep removing any water and also lava. I'm not sure why, but for some reason this one's decided to stop. I'm not entirely sure what went wrong there, but I think I've fixed it. Everything seems to just like not have moved across properly, but yeah, it's working again. I'd better get back to removing water and collecting up diamonds if I ever see them. Looks like I finally found my first big bit of lava, but it's still way easier to deal with these compared to the pre 1.0. 18 lava lakes. Look at this, I've finally reached some of the bedrock. There is still plenty of lava to be gotten rid of. So much so that I'm going to temporarily stop the machines, then I can properly clear everything out, and by the looks of things, I have got rid of all of the water and all of the lava. Let's set these machines back off, and continue blowing up the massive perimeter. Well, that was them. <laughs> then maybe I shouldn't have gone for those diamonds. Although I have managed to get loads and loads of diamonds with that, like two stacks from all of this. So all of this blowing up is a pretty easy way to find them. But pretty much just everywhere you look, there's one there, there's some down there, some over there. I plan to build something using all of these eventually. Exactly what though, I'm still not decided. Look what we have here, it's a fossil as well. They're pretty rare out here, but uh, I'm, I'm not gonna get it because I don't really need it. Progress is looking very good indeed. More and more of the hole is getting blown up. Nearly died there again, guys. I really should stop risking my life just to get a few diamonds. After all, they are for peasants anyway. And look at this, it is more or less done. Just these last few bits that are getting blown up. And look at this, the perimeter is now complete. It also seems that my machine has got stuck on a bit of stone. Suppose it was bound to happen eventually. Oh, you know what, this is, this is all going wrong now, isn't it? 
Yeah, I, you know, I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to be breaking it anyway. And for these other ones, I'm going to disable them using redstone blocks. Tidy up these edges by removing all the lava. Absolutely magnificent. And the next phase is to now break loads of bedrock. And I could do that manually by using pistons and TNT and stuff like that. But that would honestly take me like years and years, probably the rest of my life if I was to break all the bedrock in there. So instead, we're going to build a bedrock breaking machine. Now, in order to build this machine, I'm going to need a load of pistons. No, that's not going to be enough. Instead, I'll have to craft a load more, which means heading to the stone generator and mining loads of it up. All of this should be enough, so let's craft more pistons. An entire shulker box should probably be enough. Also need loads of stone slabs, so I've got all the stone in there ready. And also observers, slime blocks, and a bunch of other items which I have right here. I'm also becoming very, very low on food. Even the food shulker box is practically empty. So I'm going to fly on upwards above the bedrock, take the remaining food from my hoglin farm, and then AFK up here a bit to get even more food. A little bit of time has passed. I'm not going to stay up here for ages and ages. The real question is, uh, what are you doing up there? I'll just get rid of you. Top up the shulker box with pork chops and head over to the perimeter. Every time I see it, I just think it looks so, so good. And it'll look even better when I break all of this bedrock. So right here is roughly the center of this area. I may have to do a little bit of mining on these walls to make it a bit smooth. You can see these bits sticking out at the bottom will probably have mob spawning on them. But I can worry about that a little bit later. And right here is exactly where I'm going to build the machine. Thankfully, it's not too complicated of a machine. And once you see it in action, you'll think that it looks so, so cool. These pistons are where the bedrock breaking is going to happen and move around. Now let's build the area that kind of, well basically where all the magic happens. There we are. This side is complete. Took a little bit longer than I expected it to. Now to add all of the redstone on this side. And thankfully, it's not quite as complex as that one. This side is also finished. It was also a bit of a nightmare. And all that's left me to do now is add loads and loads of pistons with loads and loads of slabs on top. And whilst I still will need to add a lot more pistons and a lot more slabs, I can actually be adding those as the machine is running. I think we test this out. So to start it, I just open up this gate here. And as you can see, everything begins moving. And this TNT is blowing up. And as you can see, it is breaking the heads of the pistons so you get something that looks like this very strange on both sides and you can see the pistons from up here will be placed along here which is why we need so many of them so that's what the tnt is kind of doing and pistons are also getting broken so yeah, you can see this middle layer has actually broken the bedrock already so I'm going to try and pick up as many of these pistons as I can. And that's how I'll make sure I don't run out of pistons. Now I wait for the machine to go back along there. And it's placing all of these slabs along as well. Which I believe it has taken from that roof. And now more TNT is falling and more bedrock is being broken. And before I let the machine go any further, I'm just going to flick this gate which will turn it off. As you can see, we have two strips of broken bedrock. So now that the machine is set up, it is pretty self-sustaining. It'll just, you know, keep running as long as I make sure I have all of the pistons placed. And of course the slabs above that. Then it will keep running without any issues. So I'm going to get rid of a massive area of bedrock all along here and show you the finished product. Well, the rain is pouring, but as you can see, the top layer of bedrock has been completely removed all the way over here. But then I accidentally broke the machine because I forgot to place the stone and then I placed it too late and it, it, it just completely, just everything does not work anymore. But I'm more or less at the end, so I'm just going to remove these bits of bedrock manually and also manually mine up this machine. It's also great being so far down because uh, phantoms don't spawn down here, so this is really, really good. The rain's now stopped as well. You know what, guys? These videos, they take so, so long to make and you've probably not seen many people that build them machine that actually breaks bedrock but trust me guys we are only just getting started so if you like what you see then make sure to subscribe since i'm also trying to hit 4 million subscribers this year and that is every single block broken now to collect up all of these pistons fly back home and i can grab all the materials that i need to manually break the bedrock everything i need is right here so it's time to begin breaking that's the first one done. As you can see, the bedrock underneath is gone. It's technically slower than using a machine, but it's going to be way quicker than rebuilding another one. This floor here is also going to be obsidian, so I might as well start placing it. As much as I'd love to break these layers below of bedrock, I just have to take out so much around the edge as well to do that, and it's... It would honestly take me about 20 hours to properly remove all the layers of bedrock. And since I've only got like 33 hours per video, I'm uh, I'm only going to remove this top layer. And for those of you that think that they changed it so that spawning is equal no matter what height in the world you're at, they actually reverted that change before the full release of 1.18. And that is every single piece of obsidian down. So let's get rid of these extra bits of bedrock. And that is all of the bedrock. Okay, well, maybe not that, that didn't work. Time for take two. And now all of the bedrock 
has been removed. Although this obsidian does need to be one longer on the east side, so I'm going to break this strip of bedrock as well. It should be a pretty quick process. This extra layer is now also done, and the platform can also be a little bit longer in this direction because the bedrock breaker was a bit wider than just three chunks. And as much as I'd like to get rid of these extra bits of bedrock, I'm more or less out of TNT, and my armor is not looking too good. Can repair everything at the gold farm, then mine a load of sand, grab a load of gunpowder to craft TNT so that I can break the rest of this bedrock. And that is all of them gone. Now to fly home again, grab more sand on the way, then it can all be smelted, the glass dyed various colours, and then placed around the outside to fill in the gaps and create a nice little border. And it has to be something like glass so that mobs can't spawn on it. And that is a red border completely done. Now to add some purple around it, and it really is starting to come together. It would look a lot better if there wasn't any bedrock on this top layer, but you know what? We, we can't be fussy now. I've just run out of purple glass. I need like maybe three or four more pieces, but I have no purple dye left. And that's because I have no blue dye left. But very conveniently, thanks to this perimeter, I can easily find lapis, which can be turned into blue dye, and from there make purple. And that is two layers of the border done. The final layer is going to have black stained glass. Although I'm a little bit worried that I might not have enough for this. And that is all my glass gone. I'm definitely liking the look of it, but I'm going to head back home, grab these remaining pieces of glass, and get all the ones that filtered through to this chest before I block the hopper. Now I should definitely have enough to finish the project. And there we have it. All of the glass that I want to have down is there and we can get a good look at it from a, uh, a nice top-down view. I think it looks cool. I think it's got a uh, pretty cool different look about it. And you'll see that the border is four wide on all the sides except for this one, but we are going to remove this obsidian layer anyway, so I'll put red glass along there. And I am a bit tired of always running out of glass. I think it's in my best interest to mine up loads of sand and all this could be smelted to top up the glass in my collection. And I also need to remove these little dupers at some point, so I suppose there's no time like the present. That is the last of those broken. Now to remove the return terminals. And that is all of those gone as well. So now it's time to build the next contraption. And that next contraption will be a light update suppressor. Basically one of these allows you to place light sources in a room and it will stay dark. And that's how we're going to be able to have loads and loads of portals, but still keep it very, very dark on those blocks so that mobs can spawn. As you can see, if I stand in the portal, the light level goes up to 11. But with a light update suppressor, we can make that zero. Although first things first, I'm going to need to build a chunk loader. Otherwise, when I'm suppressing the light, the chunks just wouldn't load. So let's get this contraption built. And oh, of course you guys have to show up. So that's my portal sorted, as well as the redstone. Now to head through and do the same on the other side. And the portals on this side is complete as well. So in theory, I should be able to put an item in here. And look at that, it just keeps going through. So the truck loader is now working. Let's break the scaffolding. It just seems to be raining and raining and raining, never ending. And before I forget, I'd also like to build a beacon. Since this project is going to require a lot of mining of obsidian, which means having a bit of haste will be very useful indeed. And since the effects of that one don't quite reach all the way to the other side, I'm going to build another one right here. There we go, double beacon set up. And you'll notice another problem that's starting to develop. We've got bats spawning. Now bats are going to be a real problem for this farm. So I'll need to create something called a bat switch at some point, but I'm I'm not going to do that just yet. Instead, I'm going to gather up all the resources that I need for this light update suppressor. It's basically just going to be one massive lag machine. I've gathered up every single item that I need in all of these different shulker boxes. It's not a very complex build, but there is quite a lot of blocks that I need to place. I'm building it in the spawn chunk so that it'll keep running even when I'm not in the area. And it's going to be built all the way up at sky limit, since that is what will cause the most lag for the lighting engine. I've marked out the entire border of this machine, and on top of these, we're going to have have powered rails and there's going to be some strips along here as well and now adding strips along like this and the reason i've got different color concretes is so i can mark out where each observer is going to go and now to add rails all the way along on top of this and then there'll be a row of observers attached like this to all of the rails so that it'll activate a load of pistons whenever these light up. Now to build a row of these on this side. Now we're going to add all of the stone and this is what's going to be moved back and forth to create the light updates. I've marked out the edge, now I've just got to fill in the middle. That's all the stone placed down. I can add all the observers by doing this and then all of the pistons like this. Now to add a few more redstone components. Yes, yeah, so I just added a redstone here and it's, it's, it's set everything off which was not part of the plan. Um, okay, but that stopped it again. Okay, that's good. Turns out the reason for the issue was that there needs to be a redstone block here before I place the redstone. And that is all the redstone for this section done. Now to add more rails, and now to repeat the exact same thing three more times. I'm 
with these three pistons, it is complete. Well, it's almost complete, but I somehow ran out of stone, so um, I'm just gonna go and grab a bit more. And thanks to haste, this is something that I can do very, very quickly. Now to finish it off, before I test it out, I wanna head back to my house, grab a load of ladders, and build a way for me to easily get up and down, just in case for some reason I can't use my elytra because of all the lag. Now when I flick this note block, Okay, <laughs> something should have happened. I'm gonna try placing a redstone block instead, see if that works. Okay, um, something moved. Yeah, that must be the way it works. You have to bud all the rails. So if I go ahead and, okay, I can't place it there, but if I place it here, you'll see that all these rails will stay on, if that makes sense. Okay, it's, it's starting to work now. Just need to bud these rails along here as well. And as you can see, this is, this is causing quite a bit of lag. Now, if I do that, yes, they have all stopped. And if I go again, Everything should be moving. Okay, I mean, it's kind of working, but not perfectly. The main problem is the position of these observers. You can see if I remove that, it stops, and then they uh, they just need to go on this piston here. All observers should be fixed, in theory. <laughs> we should now have a working lag machine. I'm going to leave it to run for about two or three minutes. Enough time has passed. Let's just go ahead and press it again to stop it. And now the light queue is going to be pretty full, which means I can do some pretty random things. I'm going to place a torch here and a torch here. And now if I close my game, I've done it using task manager. And now as you can see, we've got a dark room with torches and they're just not properly lighting up the room. And you can see from the F3 menu at client light, it's zero light level everywhere in here. So Mobs could spawn in here, no problem. And that is how we are going to build the end of light farm. The next thing I'm going to build is a sliced portal in the nether. That means that mobs will just fall straight out of the portal. And it also looks way cooler as well. And to do this, we're going to need an update suppressor. And for that, we're going to need loads and loads of powered rails. I'm talking like 2,000 of them, which is about 30 stacks. All we have at the moment is three stacks. So uh, I better go into my nice old gold reserves. Everything I need is right here. Let's begin crafting. Turns out it's not actually as resource heavy as I first thought. I've nearly got all of it that I need and I didn't even have to use up all of my gold. I'm also going to use sandstone as the building block since I can get a lot of that very, very quickly. That is everything that I need. And now I need a ridiculous amount of hay bales. They'll be used to make target blocks, but I'm going to need like 230 of them, which, you know, I could grow the wheat myself or something like that. But that just sounds like a waste of time and energy. Instead, I'm going to grab my trusty ho and set off flying in search of new villages. And from there, I can steal all of their hay bales. Shouldn't take me long to get the 232 ones that I need. Look at that. There's literally a village right next door to the one I was just at with more hay bales to steal. Already, I'm nearly up to two stacks. Sorry about this, Mr. Farmer. I can steal more from these pillagers by taking the bodies. I didn't expect to be doing this when I set off on the journey. And whilst I'm here, you poor golems, be free. Your days of being trapped behind bars are no more. And I've actually got all the hay bales I need now. So I'll fly back home. I can do that by using a portal. And then to craft the target blocks. And what's that you say? I, I don't quite have enough. Well, don't worry. I have a stack of spare ones in this chest. I also need a non-sticky block like terracotta. So I'm going to grab all the clay and set it off smelting in here. And then since I have so much bone meal, I'll turn it into white dye to create white terracotta and set that off smelting as well. All of this should be enough for now. I can leave the rest of it smelting in the background. And before I actually do any building, I'm going to fly up to the pigment farm and repair my elytra since they're a little bit worse for wear. Everything's fully repaired, so I'll activate the nether mob switch. Right here is where I'm going to have the slice portal, but to do that, I'm going to first have to create an update suppressor. And whilst I can build it over there, I'll need a little bit more room here as well, so I'm going to mine out this wall. And also remove any lava that's in the way at the same time. Because these two up here, I think, I think I'm going to have to plug them up as well, which I, I hope I can do with netherrack. You know what, I've got good armor, let's, uh, I, bet we need, I was going to fly into the lava, but, uh, I didn't need to. I will for this one though. There we go. And now to continue mining. Everything over here has been done, but I've still got a big area on this side to do. And there's a little ruined portal here. Nothing too useful. And whilst I'm at it, I'll need to drain this lava lake as well. But don't worry, <laughs> I've got a lot of experience when it comes to draining lava lakes. So it shouldn't be too much trouble at all. And that is every bit of lava drained down to bedrock and all of the blocks cleared out of the way as well. And now to make a bit of a floor with this glazed terracotta. And then this is going to have powered rails on top of it. I'm also going to place them in this direction as well. Made a nice little sandstone staircase going up here. And we're basically going to be using rail budding to cause update suppression, which is going to allow us to slice a portal right here. If it sounds complicated, that's because it kind of is. I'm making a big platform right here, which is just going to be full of rails. It takes a serious amount to cause update suppression, over 2,000. Now I'm finally getting to place the trusty target blocks, and then to add even more sandstone, as well as the redstone underneath. Now I'll add a row of redstone blocks, and the big task of placing all of the rails can begin. And that is every single one of them placed. It didn't actually take as long as I thought. A little note block can go right there. We're going to have another rail here. And now to add the system that will bud the powered rails. All of that is now ready to 
to go, but now to create the system that will bud these lines along here. It's really starting to come together, but now I need to turn a corner and go in this direction. All that's left for me to do now is place redstone blocks in all of these, and this will bud the pistons and bud the rails. Actually, it doesn't bud the rails just yet, but if I go like this and then do that, now the rails are budded and the update suppressor is working. Let's grab the flint, we've got the obsidian, and if all goes to plan, I can go ahead and build a portal right here like so okay this isn't okay you know what something's not right because the rails have gone off let me go ahead and just redo it Do the rails go off now no you can see they stay on you can see things are moving so that means it is the, the update suppressor is definitely working that's way the way you can tell and prepare for your minds to be blown as we break that look at this look at that the portal well it's not like a normal portal is it we can break another one and then we'll break this final piece of obsidian and as you can see we have now successfully slice the portal. I'll turn off the update suppressor, remove these blocks from behind, and there you have it. All of this work just to remove the bottom layer of a portal. But it'll definitely be worth it because any mobs that come through this portal now will just fall straight down and I'll make a hole down there. So next, everything here needs to be removed. And thankfully, since it's all made from sandstone, it can be mined very, very fast. Well, that's to be said, mining up all those rails did not take long at all. Well, if you hadn't watched the video, you'd have never have known that all of this was here before and now we've just got this lonely portal, although I do still have some big plans, as I'm now going to rebuild that entire update suppressor right here. As it happens, the beacon's going to be in the way, so I better mine it up and then I'll be able to move it. And there is also the issue that the blocks on the ground have to be non-sticky ones, so the glass would be very problematic. Instead, there's going to be lots of glazed terracotta as the floor, which I'll change back to glass once I'm done. And I'm also going to add actual blocks for all of the rails to go on. And now to begin building the even bigger update suppressor. It's pretty much the same thing, only that rail and all the bud lines will go further and the same in that direction. And you've already seen me build this once before, so I'll see you again when the entire machine is complete. The entire update suppressor has been built. As you can see, this one is quite a bit bigger and it has all this extra mechanism behind it so that I can actually move the update suppressor across by touching that note block in the distance. I've got my beacon back, but I can't have any light from the beacon coming over here, so that's why it's completely been covered. And now I'm just going to make it so that there's no skylight coming down so that this farm will work even during the day because even without the roof, the game will still think it's dark down there. The only issue is that this roof is absolutely massive, so it's going to take me quite a bit of time to fill it all in. So Tell you what, building the roof alone has been a monster project, but I'm now very, very close to completing it. And that is mission accomplished. I think this beacon is far away enough, but I'm just going to patch it up to be extra safe. And according to the F3 menu, there's still one and two light levels and three even on the uh, on the sky, from the sky. So I've just got to extend it a little bit further out. So I'm going to extend it by four on this side. And I'll also do the same thing on this side. Although I've just run out of blocks. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to need this many. That's three shulker boxes worth. Thankfully, I don't think I'll be running out of netherrack any time soon. Looks like all of my glass that I set off smelting has done as well. That's going to be useful for the project. And now to get back to finishing this roof. It would seem that on this side the roof is already wide enough, but just to be safe I'm still going to extend it by a couple of layers. And I already know that this side needs way more layers. So let's extend the beacon cover up a little, okay not like that though, <laughs> up a little bit and then we can just extend the roof around it. And now mission to build a giant roof is complete. And I also want to add an extra layer of blocks in front of this beacon because if I have to exit break some of the sandstone it would cause a lot of problems and I do stupid stuff all the time so uh, yeah that, that should be much safer it feels so dark in here all right well you know what that means guys it means it's time to begin although before I can actually do the part where I slice all the portals I plan to build the AFK platform which will also have a bat switch and part of that is going to be to have a flint and steel with unbreaking three on it and I will also need a water bucket so I'll just take an empty one and I was going to say that finding water should be pretty easy but <laughs> everything's frozen not to worry I can just literally do this take the middle one and that will refreeze. Now the AFK platform is going to be right in the middle which is is here so it's going to be built from glass to keep it spawn proof and this portal here is going to be our bat switch. I'll make sure there's glass on top so nothing can spawn there and on this back side we're going to have a couple of dispensers so I can turn the portal on and off. That's why this one has a flint and this one has a water bucket. So the one with the flint is just going to have a normal button on the side like that. So the water bucket one is going to have an observer. That way when I press the button, you'll see the water both appears and disappears because of the observer. Well, I've had a change of heart and decided to move the dispensers to this side. That way it's just a lot easier to get to the buttons. Next it's time to do some portal linking on the other side. Now the most important thing for this part will be to make the portals around it slightly higher. So because these portals are one block higher, any mobs and bats that spawn at the bottom of the world will go to the lowest portal, which is this one, 
and then some bats will fly into these portals once their cooldown is finished and this portal here will link to in here so yeah i'm, I'm kind of trapped right now not not too much of a problem and once i get about 15 bats in here i can go ahead and turn off the portal and then no more bats will be able to spawn all the way down there so all that's left me to do is make sure that every portal is linked and then encase this entire area in a glass box that's the walls behind the portals complete now to add a roof actually i want the roof to be one lower otherwise the bats might get stuck in the corners and now to encase the whole thing in a glass box so that nothing can escape and the mobs are going to fall straight down here and there'll be a collection system at the bottom but that's all i need to do with that for now i'll finish it later instead let's begin this project before i set off i've just got to make sure that this chunk loader is working which it is and before i actually start the machine i've actually grabbed a few extra items so you can see when i power this note block everything starts and then when i unpower it it stops so i'm going to build a really simple little hopper timer that when this hoppo empties it will then activate the redstone and turn on the machine. I'll just took a load of slime blocks in for now since I don't need them. So from the moment I flick this lever, I... Oh no, I need some redstone here. I have now got two minutes to get to the chunks because chunks will load fine when it's not on. But when it's on, yeah, chunk loading is a bit, a bit dodgy really. Okay, I didn't mean to use a totem there. You know what? It's all in the name of speed. It's a race against the clock. I can't be messing about. Although, to be honest, two minutes was loads and loads of time, so I don't think I was ever in any danger of not making it. Let's get another totem whilst I wait for the uh, the thing to start. By my calculations, it should now have started. I can test it out just by flying away. And as you can see, no new chunks are loading. Look at that. We, we can't really... Uh, we can't go there. So, we know that the light suppressor is in action. So, let's start up the update suppressor and get to work. There's a lot of suppressing going on in this video, isn't there? <laughs> I'm also going to use the chunk borders to make the portals the right thing. I know it's working because the things are moving when I play stuff, so we're going to light it up. And now when I mine up this obsidian, as you can see, we have sliced the portal. I can get rid of the top one as well, and I have to break this entire top row now. This is what's going to take the most time, just mining loads and loads of obsidian. And this is where my glass is going to come in on the end. In fact, on that edge, I don't need to do anything, actually. But when I get rid of this portal, this obsidian block right here can instead be glass so nothing can spawn there. And as you can see, when you break a portal, it always you always lose this end one, which is why I have to make it one longer than I want it to be. Got a bit carried away with this third portal and <laughs> made it way too long. Now let's create this third portal, slice it once again, and remove the excess obsidian this right here is going to get changed to glass and this end bit of obsidian in the floor is going to be red stained glass that's layer one successfully complete let's turn off the update suppressor and now when i use this note block everything moves across one and we repeat the exact same process right here it's just so satisfying every time when you okay <laughs> as i say when you slice the portal in half i should turn on the update suppressor first and i just realized why it's not working i am um, i need to extend this so this be a block there and then that like that. Then it's all connected. Now I can start the update suppressor. Light the portal. Slice it. That's layer two complete. So I'll move the suppressor along again. And just rinse and repeat. I managed to complete eight layers. But as you can see, my game is now going very, very laggy. I think it's something to do with the massive light queue. So I'm going to enter the nether through one of these portals and see if it even works. Look at that. It did work. Okay. And... <laughs> Straight into my own trap. And yeah, you can see, we're getting a lot of bats spawning as well. That's why we need a bat switch. I wouldn't... Could the bats be causing the lag? Well, I flew away so they'd all despawn. Yeah, it's not helped. So instead, I'm going to reload the game. Now then, when I reload the world, it actually takes me back here, which is, is probably not a good thing. So I need to go through this portal. So now I'm going to make my way out of here. Then I'm going to head to spawn. And the spawn chunks load with no problem, which is good. Then I'll remove all of the slime from here. And I need to flick this off, don't I? Put some back in. The machine stops. The lag's gone. It's, it's beautiful. Now to flick this lever and repeat the whole process again. And thanks to the F3 menu, I can tell that this has worked and everything is light level zero. And now I can get back to work and add more layers. Well, it has been a massive grind, but I am finally on the final layer and the constant lag is driving me absolutely crazy but yeah we're so close to the finish line i've spent a good four or five hours just doing the same thing over and over again and i'm so glad that the finishing line is now in sight and there we have it every single portal is complete the update suppressor can be turned off for the final time and i can now move this machine a few times so that it goes out of the way i'll just keep going look at that it's, it's so cool when you just like actually watch it move like that and then Another time. I think it's well and truly out of the way now. I'm going to tidy up the area a little bit and get rid of this beacon now before I forget about it. I've still got a lot of things to do to make this work. And if I make one wrong move, 
all my progress will just be wasted. And I do not fancy having to replace every single portal again. Seems that a few neighbors spawned without me realizing. And I'm guessing this was from a lightning strike. The next thing I will do is go through one of these portals and join all the ba- Oh my goodness, yeah, this is absolutely crazy. This is probably one of the reasons why it was so laggy. There's 1,400 of them here. I can't get out of here because my game's kind of in this laggy state now. I'm just going to have to quit the world. I, it probably won't let me quit. I'll have, probably have to like end it with Task Manager. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly why I created a bat switch. I definitely do not want something like that to happen again. Now we can safely fly up to the light suppressor and turn it off. It feels so nice to have smooth, normal gameplay. I haven't had this in about five hours. I will need it again before the farm is finished. But first, I'm going to head to my pigman farm and repair all my tools, all my items, and uh, I'm going to take a break. Well, that's enough of that. Let's dump all of these items, grab more shulker boxes, and then I can start the timer for the light suppressor to turn on. This chunk loader up here can be removed. I know the light suppressor is working because chunks will no longer load. So that means that I can safely remove this entire roof. This is definitely a much quicker process than it was to place all of these. And because I've got the light suppressor on, this will make the game think that it is still dark down there when I reload the world. And so mobs will still be able to spawn down there, even in the daytime. And that is all of that removed. Let's get rid of this where the beacon once stood. And also remove the update suppressor. Let's also remove the other beacon. All of this needs to go as well. And now to get rid of all these rails and the sandstone underneath. And finally, every single one of the rails has been removed. And the final thing to be done is to mine up all of the glazed terracotta and replace it with glass. I also almost broke my other pickaxe, so uh, <laughs> thankfully I just about did a substitution in time. The final steps of this farm have involved a lot of mining. I've removed all of the terracotta, but I'm sick of the game being so laggy, so I'm going to mine up all the shulker boxes and then head through the portal. Nice to be welcomed by a lot of bats. Oh no, not again. It is not easy to get out of there one bit. I have made it all the way to spawn, and let's turn off this machine. Okay. The frame rate, it, it, it's so much nicer. How on earth did you get up here? <laughs> Have fun getting down, mate. <laughs> that was, uh, that was really evil. I'm going to reload the world anyway now. Now everything is so much smoother and I, I, I you know what? I can't do it to you guys, actually. I'll leave you guys up here. And now to head back home, drop off some of this stuff, and then let's get this pickaxe repaired. And now let's place down all of this glass. I've also realized that I did mess up the skylight suppression somehow. So this farm will only be running at full capacity at night. And that's because that roof should be the final thing that you remove, not all the stuff. But that's not to worry because I can fix it. I just have to rebuild that roof, then start light suppressing, and the problem will be fixed. However, since we're on day 3000, we don't really have time to do that, so we're going to test it out tonight when the sun goes down, because it'll, it'll just work like normal at night. And I think that is now every piece of glass place down. Let's fly back home, offload these remaining items, and grab magma, hoppers, and a bunch of rails. And now let's sort out the chamber where the mobs are going to fall. We're going to have a layer of magma here, and then hopper minecarts would pick the items up under here. I'm going to create a, a much better story system that will cope with the sheer amount of items. It's going to be like 100,000 items per hour, but I haven't really got time for that right now. The only thing I do have time for is to turn off this mob switch, and then to test out the end of life farm, and oh my goodness, you can see it happening right below your very eyes. Look at the mobs spawning in and then just ult and then going through this looks so so cool and i can't actually see what's going on on the other side but i'm going to show you guys in replay mode just looks so mesmerizing from up here though yeah i thought i'd look at the replay file as well guys and um yeah the sheer carnage is amazing but <laughs> this is this is not quite how it's meant to go yeah I, I definitely need to work on my bat switch a little bit but i haven't seen anyone successfully do that in a single player world i've only seen people do it with more than one player so I'll have to get me thinking cap on with this one. Because, I mean, bats are coming through, but there's there's still way too many bats through. That, I, I, I can put lava walls. I, I, I'll come up with something. From the F3 menu, I can see that loads of bats are coming through since their cooldown. We've already got, like, 40 bats in here already. And now we've got a spider. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've definitely got to, um, I've got to sort the farm out a little bit. But, cause, yeah, cause it's, it, it, there's too many mobs for me to handle right now, the system I've got. The system through there will definitely be improved. The bats just keep coming. We've got 165, 160. Yeah, you see... No more new bats will be spawning, but because there's like a thousand already in there, <laughs> they'll just keep on coming through. But you've got to say, guys, it really is an insanely amazing farm. I mean, the idea was that when I get to 15 bats, I would just press that and then they would stop coming through, but we're, <laughs> we're at 250. I'm not meant to be able to, uh, to get that many. So yeah, before any more come through, I'm going to disable that. That should hold them back. Any more bats now will probably go down there and, and hopefully they'll despawn after a bit. You guys just, just all land and uh, <laughs> make yourselves comfortable. But yeah guys, if you thought that this video was amazing, if you think this farm is something else, then uh, please subscribe. I'd just appreciate it so, so much. The sun has set guys, so that was 3,000 days in hardcore Minecraft. Also, don't forget to get your signed poster. I, uh, I haven't actually signed this one yet, but uh, it will be signed when you order it.